welterweight fight. So a more than five-year gap between these two fighters when it comes to the age. Some differences in height and reach as well. All right, now for the particulars, here's Bruce Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a wrestler holding a professional record of 23 wins, nine losses, and one draw. He stands five feet six inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds, fighting out of Tom's River, New Jersey, Frankie, the answer! And now it's his opponent fighting out of the red corner. A boxer holding a professional record of 18 wins, six losses. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Beijing, China, Lee the Leech King Leon. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Eve Loving. The veteran Eve Levine draws the assignment here. You ready? All right, so here we go. This highly anticipated fight is now underway. Looks like a classic matchup of striker versus grappler. Am I simplifying things too much? In this instance, you aren't, because this is what got these two men to the show. Right. One guy is known for his diverse attack on the feet. The other guy is known for his ability to drag the fight to the mat and put his opponents in danger from the very start. Oh. using his strength there to posture up. We'll see what he can do now. He's gonna start looking to land big shots from the top. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. but you gotta be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Well, you know I don't like the gi very much, but I have an appreciation and a healthy one for these type of transitions. You can tell he's been in a gi at some point in his life with the way that he moves so freely. I'm skipping jujitsu next week, too. <laughs> All right, he's got side control here, DC. You know he's got a lot of different submissions in his arsenal once this fight gets to the ground. Hammer fist. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. Man, isn't it fun to watch this dude work on the mat? He's unbelievable how fluid he is in his motions on the mat. 15 seconds. It's the elbow there. Well, you see all the grappling repetitions here. Just beautiful movement, seamless transitions on the ground. Over and over, these guys are doing things that you see in every jiu-jitsu gym around the country. Every time you throw it, I like to stick to your boxing. That's going to win the fight for you. Just keep set. All right, so let us now check out some of the action in that round, DC. There was a whole lot of it, including a stunner upstairs that nearly closed the show. It was a lot of action. It was back and forth action, but the big moment was that big strike to the head that landed that put him on wobbly legs and then survival mode 
Luckily, he made it to the end of that round. his back DC now looks like he's trying to hip escape yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here well he's up but oh is he hurt good movement by him here transitioning very well on the ground to him. step for step he's staying with his opponent in every transition well he's up but he is hurting for certain the finish could come at any time this fight's gonna be over, DC. What a great play of mixing up with his attack. He didn't stay the course. He mixed it up. He went high because his opponent thought he was going low. And now he's got him hurt very badly. All right, so you gotta be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't wanna mess around for too long. Under three minutes now to go round two. Beautiful movement, hip work on the ground here. Just outstanding with the transition. He is not staying in one place on the ground, and that's very important. Love watching this guy move on the ground. Another nice transition there. Such a high-level grappler. You don't see that very often. He needs to move. Better move. Yeah, he's got to move, John. He's got to shrimp and try to either get up or pull his opponent back into him so he doesn't have the posture to land that big damage. Edgar's right back to the full mount here. Oh, the ground and pound strikes continue to rain down. The opponent better move out of harm's way or the referee's going to stop this. He better start to move. And when his opponent starts to posture, he needs to put his feet on the hip, push him away to try to escape this very, very dangerous position. Nicely done there as he forces the miss from his opponent. Oh, he postured up there, gained some valuable separation. And now the ground and pound start. is this to watch as he continues to dole out damage with the ground and pound. Take it back to the days of guys like Mark Coleman just beating people up in the ground and pound. This guy is a throwback fighter and he's very fun to watch. Yeah, the godfather would be proud. All right, there's the clapper. Ten seconds to go. Well, anytime you are in a ground fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. All right, let's check out some of the action, DC. What a display of just sheer punching in that last round. I mean, he looks like a boxer. He looks like a professional boxer out there throwing and stringing those combinations together. He landed those big punches over and over again, and it was this one right here that really did change the tide of the round. All right, DC, here we go with our next round. Ready? It wasn't just the accuracy, Ready? it was the aggressiveness, the volume. It was unbelievable to watch him be so active. The cardio, the push, the pace, and the pressure that he fought with. It's going to be very interesting to see if he can maintain this over 15 minutes. Big kick lands. Edgar's lower jaw very swollen now. Time to bite down on the mouthpiece and move forward. A big, massive hook that really has put his opponent on skates. Oh! All right, stacking him up here, keeping the pressure on. I know you guys do a lot of this training with your jiu-jitsu coach there in San Jose. Oh, absolutely, but it's a difference. If your feet are on our hips, it's a problem. So we shove them through the middle. We shove them through the middle so that our legs can be what controls your feet. Right. We're not using our hands. I'm not using my hands. I'm using my legs to just kind of wheel and deal you from side to side. Then my upper body is free to punch. If you get your feet on my hips, 
you're out. Right. May as well just kick away. Three minutes now to go in this one. That'll do it! Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Oh, absolutely one for the highlight reel right there. A tremendous kick to spell the end of the night for his opponent, and for him, I should say, but just caught him flush, full force, beautiful extension on the kick, and the fight was really over as soon as that one made contact. I'm not even sure he was conscious when he hit the canvas. Outstanding performance here tonight. Here's Bruce Buffer now with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve Levine has called a stop to this contest at two minutes, one second of the third round. He's playing the winner by knockout, Frankie the Answer Well, he's smiling ear to ear, and why not after a knockout like that? I need to take it to the after party tonight. I mean, this is what dreams are made of. You dream of the knockout like this, and then the party after where you and all your coaches get to celebrate the great handiwork.